On this week's breaking news, LEGO makes another quarter of record profits. Lord of the Rings is on its way back, and we have some rumors of a very tall tower that you might know in Paris. So stick around and listen to the breaking news. But first, I want to talk about a really cool store, a Brick Monarch Shop. This website is designed for all those AFLs out there that are looking for some great t-shirts with classic logos, some home decor you can put on your walls, such as shields, and some other great iconic aspects from the LEGO history. You can head over to the link in our description for Brick Monarch Shop, and you can get a discount of 10% off using Back to Brick 10. That's Back to Brick 10, the number two, so head over there so you can get some really cool AFL swag. All right, now let's get to the breaking news. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let... Breaking news. Breaking news. Hey, everybody. Breaking welcome news. back to Back to Brick. I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow AFLs about their LEGO designs and how they went about building them. And we get down to the breaking news every Friday so we can talk about all the things LEGO has been up to for the past week. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of my Lego studs tuning into the podcast and listening to me talk about Legos so you can learn more and get to hear from others as well to hear about their Lego designs and their creativity. So I will say I'm a little surprised that I can do this right now. Currently, we are still going through Hurricane Ian, which was a Category 4, almost 5 hurricane that hit the west coast in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida. And what was funny is it went right through Orlando, and that's where I am at the moment. The storm is still going on right now. It's not as strong as it was last night. We did lose power, uh, lots and lots of rain. Um, There's a holding pond just outside my Airbnb right now, and it's quite full. But luckily, no damage to the house or anywhere else. The pool is pretty full, but that's about it. I have power right now, so that's why I'm recording, and hopefully I can upload in time before the power well, might go out again. So if you hear some wind, that's just the hurricane. Uh, I want to put out my prayers and thoughts to all those that are still dealing with the aftermath of the hurricane. The storm surge was, I think, 12 to 14 feet, which is the highest on record in pretty much all of Western Florida, maybe in all of Florida. So a lot of people lost their homes and uh, it's, it's hard. And this is only the start as climate change continues to affect our weather patterns and all that. So we will see and hopefully we can kind of come back from this. In other bits of the news, I did two, not just one, live interviews on my Instagram this past week. And you'll actually get to hear them. I'm going to post one on Monday and the next one next Monday. It's similar to what I did before. I'm kind of getting back into interviews. I think interviews are a big part of the Lego community and it's fun to talk about it. You know, we can see Lego and the designs are really cool, but understanding the stories behind it is what I always wanted to achieve here. It's just difficult and I have to dedicate a little bit more time and effort to do it, especially because well, time is precious and I want to spend it with the ones that I love and doing the things that I love, which is this and I, I'm excited to put those out there so you can see them and, well, see them, what I mean, listen, and then you can appreciate them. Also, also, I've been working on these two small brickheads because I love doing brickheads and it's coming up in the Halloween season and I did a Halloween series about, gosh, three or four years ago now that I did one brickhead every day for the whole month of October, which was really fun, and these two... One I did and the other is brand new, but I've modified the one that I did. And I'm going to post the link to the Rubricables in the description so you can go check them out. I think you'll like them if you're sci-fi horror nerds, and that's probably a big hint. But I would love if you could check them out, and if you're interested, you can purchase the instructions and build them for yourself. And last week I reached out to all of you, seeing if you would give me feedback on my end of the episode review of a LEGO set. And I've got a lot of positive reviews, and at the end of this episode, we're going to be doing another LEGO review. This week's set review is going to be the Harry Potter Advent Calendar set 76404. I will also be announcing the winner of the drawings for the Brick Off, which I will be sending them a LEGO set, and we will be live to build off and see who can build the set the fastest. We'll also just be talking about LEGO and our passions for it. So stick around, and let's get into the breaking news. Lego made some big profits again this year. For the first half of 2022, their revenue jumped 17%. 
This is 27 billion Danish crowns or 3.5 billion US dollars. That is quite a lot of money. And you know, this comes with the price increases that we saw in the second half of the year. And this big jump in their revenue again comes primarily from Star Wars and Harry Potter sets. They did come out with some larger sets this past couple or past six months that we know about. The ATAT was a big hit, all the Mandalorian and Boba Fett sets. So they definitely drew a pretty big crowd. It's continuing to grow, so I wonder if they'll continue to grow even with the price increases. I bet they will. So we'll have to see how well the reactions are to uh, well the next half of the year. It is coming up on the Christmas season, which means tons of people are gonna be buying Lego sets. Maybe not as many, but the prices are high enough that that might not matter. Or I could just be completely wrong and there will be a ton of Lego sets being bought no matter the price. I was a few days off. I had said Thursday or Friday, but Lego on Monday re officially revealed the Lego UCS Razor Crest. This is from the Mandalorian TV show, and it is 6,187 pieces, and it comes with three minifigures, well, four if you include Baby Yoda, for a price of $600. Now, this is the first Lego set or UCS set that is from a TV show, um, not a Lego set because there's a few. This one from a UCS series style, and it's the second largest Lego Ultimate Collector Series set ever. The, uh, the Millennium Falcon is still the largest. And having it with three uh, custom minifigures, this is a, uh, a good call to actually have them for a UCS set because that was some complaints before. Um, we've got uh, Grogu, the Mandalorian, um, Mithril, and uh, Krill, Krall, Krall, yeah. Um, and actually has a buildable blurg. There's a lot of clean lines, no studs on top, and it's a fully interior designed ship. The Millennium Falcon isn't even done that way. Now I bet they will do in the next 10 years, something like that, but it'll it'll be over the $1,000 mark. I bet $1,200 $1, or $1,500, depending on how prices continue to increase. It's a beautiful set. I did complain about it before because they could have done some more of the classic ships, and I still stand by that. But this is a great ship, and I will purchase it. The price is on a good level. I think it's 11 cents per piece, and that's that's normal. That's better because some sets are 15 uh, cents per piece. So the price does match, so uh, people kind of need to stop complaining about it. I don't know where anyone will display this, and I kind of like how they did the box art with a lean um, but they don't have that here, and the legs can't be removed. Somebody will figure out how to remove them so it can be in flying mode. But I hope that, I know Wicked Bricks will probably do a leaning stand, but somebody will also create a Technic uh, base that you could probably find on Rebrickable soon enough. I'll post a link in the description so you can go check it out and probably order it when it comes available on October 3rd for VIP members. Lego has released their Lego Duck, the classic that we've seen before that they have at the Lego house and the wooden one from way back at the beginning. Now it's in a 3D printed minifigure scale model. It's in red and you can actually have a little clip to it where someone can, uh, minifigure can hold on to it. This was given away when you purchased a um, exclusive minifigure during their latest convention or the fan weekend event and right now it's selling for a ridiculous amount online you could get it if you spend over 150 pounds uh, in the Lego house for that weekend it's a really cool little model uh, I wonder if they'll continue to make an exclusive just for the Lego house or if it was just for this event if you somebody just modeled this in a 3d file you could definitely print it and someone also stated that's the first time Lego has done a 3D printed model piece, which is not accurate. This one's probably the first sold because they did do one for the Insider Tour where they actually had like a drafting table and it had a drafting pencil like arm that they used uh, that was 3D molded and printed, uh, or not molded, just printed. So let's see if they do some more additive manufacturing pieces so that we can have some cool little I guess toys or specific things for Lego sets. A lot of toy makers have come out stating that they're going to increase, increase, wow, increase their prices for their toys this coming Christmas season. Ahead of the Christmas season, the CEO of Lego, Niall De B. Christensen, has stated that 
We want our products to be available and we have the luxury of not being purely commercial in our approach. We're privately owned, so it's not about the performance in one quarter. We want to do what's the best for us long term. And they already increased their prices. So they kind of headed off instead of doing this for the Christmas season, they did it for, well, the future. I wonder if they'll continue to increase prices if the inflation continues to rise, but as of the Christmas season, they will not be. So the prices you see now are the prices you can get for Christmas. Lego Ideas does a lot of contests and a lot of them will be for uh, little sets that you can get for gift with purchase. And one of the latest ones that they revealed is the Ray the Castaway gift with purchase. If you purchase over $120 uh, starting October 1st, you can get this set. It includes 239 pieces. It's an 18 plus set, which I don't really understand that because it's not that complicated to build. You've got a guy with his little shack uh, on a, well, island. You also get a cool pair, a fish hanging up. So I guess he's drying his fish. And it's a Lego idea set, but it's not labeled as that which I guess because it's a gift with purchase, but I don't understand because this was a creation, I believe, if I'm correct, for Lego Ideas. Uh, but I think it's cool. Definitely one that I would like to get. There's another one that I'd like to get, but I'll talk to you about that in one of the later segments. Lego is still trying to justify why they increase their prices. The Lego Group CEO has argued that high quality products with a long life cycle are proven better as an investment instead of toys that may only grab children's attention for two weeks or so. He also said that remains to be seen if pressure on the households will affect presence or uh, if the consumers scale down as things like cars or travel based on, well, the price increases of fuel and whatever else you can think of that continue to rise. Lego is just another increase in price and that we'll see reflecting in all of our other products that we've seen just in our daily lives. So he's right. This will probably hold attention more than two weeks and you can continue to build and build and build. So I guess that's a good argument. Still sucks. The Lego Star Wars video game has been extremely popular and I have finally purchased it and I have been playing it. I love it. I mean, it's just great. I wanted to get a Switch Lite so I could just travel with something like that. I also did buy a Game Boy Advance. Um, because I didn't own one, I owned a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy SP. I skipped the Advance part. So I wanted something that small that still played the Advance game so I could just throw it in my pocket and go where I wanted to. I also modded it so it has a better screen with a backlight. It's a whole thing. I like making things better but still making it the original if possible. Anyways. A lot of people are complaining about the DLCs. There are more DLCs on the way, as we saw from D23. The only problem is it's still not a lot. Uh, there are tons of LEGO minifigures, and specifically Star Wars. I can't even rem remember. I think it's over 600 now. It's the biggest LEGO series of minifigures, but they're not giving them to all of us. And I just don't know why. I think that they're trying to spread it out so that you can continue to be enticed by the game. That's a good marketing strategy. I'll give them that. But I, I'd like to try some other minifigures and the customized minifigures, which I don't think you can do in the game yet. I, I haven't played that part yet. The DLCs are nice. It's a great way to have in-purchase, air quotes, um, style of building without actually doing an in-purchase thing. So the revenues continue to increase. And the more and more we think about it, it's always about products getting profits back to the companies. I love the game so far, and I bet a lot of you do too. I don't know how many DLCs I'll actually get. There are quite a few that are cool. It just comes down to what you want to do, and a lot of people are going to probably wait for the DLCs that they really want to come out. In the past, LEGO has done a few X-Men builds. Uh, they've done uh, Wolverine. They've done, uh, what else? Um, the armor suit. They've done a couple of the other sets. I, I don't know. There's, there's a few, not many. But because Disney did buy Fox and they now own the rights to X-Men, we're expecting to see some more. And also, LEGO works with Disney pretty closely, so this would be something that they could work on that they could come together and build some more X-Men sets. I'd love to see a Deadpool set because Deadpool 3 is coming out and if you haven't seen the trailer, Hugh Jackman's coming back as Wolverine. 
there's a lot of questions people have, but I'm not questioning that idea. That's an amazing idea. And I would love to see a Lego set, even one. I mean, Doctor Strange gets one. This would be a good one for a, a Lego Deadpool set. So let's cross our fingers and hope for something just like that. Lord of the Rings is coming back. I'm so excited. If you haven't been watching the Amazon TV series, The Rings of Power, it is very good. I like it. A lot of people have different feelings. I'm not a huge, like, per by the book Tolkien fan. I like the ideas. I like his stories. The book is boring, but still, I enjoy it. And now that they've seen the interest, they're going to bring back, because they, they do have the rights, the Lord of the Rings series. Now, there are two Brickhead sets that are rumored. One is going to be with Bilbo and, or not Bilbo, Sam and Frodo, I believe. And then the other is Gandalf and the Balrog, which both are awesome. I definitely will need to get both. I'm not a huge Brickheads collector anymore, but that's probably going to change. There's still so many that I need. One that I still really, really want is Jack Skellington and uh, Sally, I just have never gotten my hands on it. So if you have one that you want to sell me, please contact me through email or back to brick two on Instagram because I want it. Then we're also talking about a direct to consumer sets, similar to how Star Wars, uh, not Star Wars, well, Star Wars has UCS sets and Harry Potter has the direct to consumer. Some could be a large scale Balrog. Um, We've got a bunch of other things. I'd love to see the Eye of Sauron. Uh, they did do one before of the Saruman's Tower, or the tw two towers. Um, there's just a lot. Maybe they'll do Hobbiton. The, this would be really a cool idea, and I'd love to see um, some of these sets come out and probably show up in my house somehow. So let's try to get that to happen. Two more botanical sets are expected to come out this February. Per Promo Bricks, they're talking about dried flowered decorations and wildflower bouquet. I don't know what those will look like specifically, but we'll get like the standard bouquet style that we did before. And the dried flowers, uh, I, I don't know. That could be like cool colors, like a darker um, palette of colors. But the botanical series has done very, very well, so I expect these to do well as well. That was a lot of wells. The Lego Foundation is donating another $25 million to the Fund for Education Cannot Wait at Global Citizens Festival, bringing their total contribution to $65 million U.S. million. They have joined together on stage at the Education Cannot Wait at the United Nations this past week, talking about the increase for education. They stated, imagine that there was a magic lever that could transform the live experiences of 222 million children and young lives in crisis context, context is in this peace keepers and builders of tomorrow well there is education to keep building this le lever the lego foundation is thrilled to announce 25 million dollars in new funding to the education cannot wait education is a huge part of our culture and our world and i think this is the best move for lego to continue to encourage that Tomorrow is October 1st, which means a lot of LEGO sets are coming out. As I talked about before, the Ray the Castaway is coming. All the LEGO Avatar series sets are coming out, which we'll talk about, and maybe I'll probably be getting one so I can get that Ray series. The biggest set that we know is going to be extremely popular is The Office, which will most likely be the Brick Club's next set for the month. Uh, the Wakanda Forever series sets are coming out, a Brickheads of Avatar, and... Another really popular one that's going to be here is the Mighty Bowser, which is a extremely large 18 plus set. And another one that I don't I don't know how this is going to do the Black Panther life size bust. All really cool sets, and I hope that you can get your hands on these, and then we can talk about them in the coming weeks. And our final bit of news is the rumored Eiffel Tower. This set is going to be massive. At 10,000 one piece. Don't know why they did the one, but this will be the second largest Lego set ever behind the uh, world map, but this will be an actual model. I wonder how detailed it's going to be, what the size is going to be. I bet it'll be like four feet. It's going to be crazy. Mm, three feet. But they also have a gifted purchase that I'm interested in, which will be Eiffel's apartment because he had an apartment in the, I believe, third level or one, two, there's three levels. The second level up 
where he could live, which will most likely be an exclusive for the set. So for people who buy it, they'll sell it for like $300. I just don't know if I'll be able to afford all these sets. So I'll just have to find a friend that would like me to like to sell me the Eiffel's apartment too. And that's all the breaking news we have this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And now just prior to our review, we're going to be announcing the Brick Off winner for finishing last week's episode in its entirety. The winner is Leah Von Damme. And I don't know if I said that correctly, so I apologize, but we will be in communication over on Instagram and we will talk about the Lego set that we will be building together. So, so excited for that. And can't wait to talk to you more and get to compete against you to see who can build it faster. All right, everybody. Now we're going to be jumping into the review of our Lego set, the Lego Harry Potter Advent Calendar, set 76404. This is going to be a 7 plus age range, including 334 pieces, 292 VIP points when purchased, and $44.99 rounded up one cent to 45. This set is dedicated to Christmas style advent calendars. So you open a set punch section every day up until the 24th of December. Now these builds may include minifigures and mini builds or sets that kind of come together in a build. And so let's talk about a few of these. There are a total of seven minifigures that are gonna be included in this. And I don't believe any of them are exclusive. That's odd because they've done the ones where Harry and Ron got the matching uh, sweaters for Christmas. And Harry Potter is a pretty good Christmas series, especially the first one when they have uh, the snow falling on the tree and all those different things. Now, I think that they're taking a hint from the Star Wars advent calendar because that's the best one in my opinion to include some mini builds of iconic areas. So let's talk about some of those because um, this isn't terrible. I would say that they have the Pensieve. They also have Gringotts Bank with the dragon on top. They have the Quidditch World Cup, which is the port key if you didn't know. Spoiler alert, they have the Whomping Willow with a, a mini car from the Chamber of Secrets. They also have the Chamber of Secrets um, the snake coming out of the uh, mouth in, in the Chamber of Secrets. They have a few hoops from the Quidditch, Quidditch pitch. There's, there's quite a few, uh, and some of them are buildable together. One is the, um, uh, what is it, the Ministry of Magic. There's two. Overall, though, it's kind of boring. I mean, they did a nice job including some of these. Some aren't that great. Um, one is just Hedwig. What? It's just a Hedwig. They also have a Dreidel, which I don't really know what that's supposed to be for. Um, they have Hagrid's um, motorcycle, and it, it doesn't look like a motorcycle at all. They're trying, and I'll give them credit. This is still probably the second best advent calendar. The Marvel one that they did last year was crap. This year, with the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, it's also crap. I've never bought the City ones, and the Friends one, I, I don't know about that either. Ugh, I Star Wars just has a lot of things, because they've been around a long time, so they have a lot of vehicles that they can build, and minifigures. Uh, I wish they, they would do some more. Like It would be hilarious if they put a Santa hat on Voldemort, which is included in the set, or Moaning Myrtle. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. There are options, and I think that this one isn't terrible. I think that they've done a better job, but they can still do more. I probably still will get this for Christmas because my wife and I both get one. We usually get a wine advent calendar and the Star Wars advent calendar always, and one other one, which we did Marvel last year and very disappointed. We're going to do Harry Potter this year. So I told her I always do the Star Wars ones. I will let her build the Star Wars one this year, and I will get Harry Potter. Now, on the site, it's rated at a three and a half star with five reviews. I think that's probably accurate. I just, I think that there are more options, and the calendars can definitely adapt. Even if they did one calendar where you build this massive model together, that would be pretty cool. Tell me what you think. You can write it in an email or under my Instagram at backtobrick2. That's our review for this week. 
I appreciate everyone that did message last week and tell me what they thought because that's a huge advantage to having a community of Lego studs just like you that are dedicated to helping grow this podcast since it is for all of you to continue to learn and get building. So stay tuned for Monday as we have our first designer interview back on the podcast. And uh, well, that's about it. Hopefully we get through this hurricane with no other issues. So I'll leave you as I always do. Get creative, get out there, and go build something.